Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're in Carlsbad, California today at Cobra headquarters talking with Cobra Golf about brand new F9 golf clubs. We've got Tom Olsofsky with us. Tom, we're going to talk right now about the F9 speedback irons and as sort of is the case across the line with F9 speedback, getting that CG low and deep to help that player get the ball in the air easier is one of the key technologies here. Yeah, I think when we talk about golf nowadays, especially with the way golf balls spin and fly, is we want to get them up quickly and, and hit them a long way. So that's always key. Uh, we're always trying to get a lower CG. We're always trying to get more forgiveness. So those are really the key tenets of the King F9 Speedback, is how do we do that differently than we've done in the past. Uh, and one of the things we were kind of felt shackled with a little bit was uh, we kept designing irons in, in about the same size and shape. And we kind of tried to break the mold and say, we got to expand the performance boundaries by doing something with the shape that's different. Um, because you can only do so much in a given shape. So when you look at the shape, you know, we call it speed back, obviously, because the back, uh, there's an actually a weight belt of material around the back of steel, which actually holds tungsten material that's very far at the edges. So what you're trying to do is reduce all the weight in the face and the top and put it all into the low extreme portion. So you can see that pretty easily in the head where we have the, the areas marked. But the idea here was how can we expand the, the blade size without making it play bigger? Uh, you have some trade-offs there. So when you look at the sole, you know, it has sort of a traditional sole. So if you look at this sole area, that's traditional what we've done in game proven for a long time. But the weight belt and the tungsten actually is much wider than that. So that performance change you get is higher launch, a little bit less spin, a little bit more forgiveness. And that's everything you want in an iron. And one of the things that we, uh, we keep learning about irons is, uh, especially as you get the longer irons, you almost can't make them get up quick enough because they're very strong lofted these days. Right. So well, that's one of the key challenges of a designer is you know, how do we make them perform better? And so that's really the speed back technology where it comes into play. And I think one of the other things is, you know, we, we want to say, let's keep the same kind of sole area because you want that same interaction. You don't want a huge sole because it does cause some concerns with golfers. So when you look at the club a little bit, you know, from, from the sole view, it looks a little bigger and wider, but actually the sole interaction area is very traditional. Yeah, and it's what's interesting, you know, for a game improvement iron, it, it, you see some of the mass and you see the wider sole, but in the playing position for a game improvement iron, it's got a really clean look at a dress. Yeah, the idea was really, and we, we told our designer, hey, let, let's make the seven iron so you don't see much of the back. But as you get to the stronger lofts in game improvement and super game improvement in the market today, you can see the backs of these irons. And we find that people are willing to uh, make that trade off from a traditional blade look because they need the performance help. You know, unfortunately, when you get it to a guy who's a, a really good player, oh, that's too big, blah, 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 can't play it. Um, but I'm a five handicap, and I switched a few, year, a few months ago, um, and I'm hitting some really good shots, you know, really flagging it. And people are saying, wow, you're hitting those irons really good. And uh, so that's been exciting for me just to switch. Uh, the one thing is, you know, as a company employee, it's easy for us to, to try different things, right? We're not paying money to do that, so that's pretty simple. But once I put it in play, it was really simple, and I'm hitting irons a lot closer to the hole, and that's really what you want in your iron game. And the other thing is, with your PowerShell face technology, in addition to the, the forgiveness, the launch, they still generate incredible distance. Yeah, and we've improved PowerShell from the last couple of years. Um, it has a little bit different material um, sections in the front, so we've actually thinned the inside. You can't see it here necessarily, because we wanted to keep that sole area pretty clean but it's thinner on the inside. We've also changed the way this comes back into the head a little bit further back. Because what you're trying to do is add some flexibility in the bottom. The more flexibility you can get in the bottom, the more speed you get. Now you mentioned you're playing these as a five handicapper. Mm -hmm. As a better player, you understand, there's a lot of game improvement irons out there that'll go a long way, hit the ball in the air, mm -hmm. but they don't feel and sound very good. And I know a lot of work's gone into creating some technologies to give these sort of a more pleasing feel. Mm -hmm. One of the things, we feel like we have the best feel in the game improvement class of golf clubs in the market today. Um, we put a, a very engineered medallion system into there. Um, it's got carbon fiber, aluminum, and uh, urethane materials, all designed in the structure so it sounds and feels really solid because every golfer wants that solid feel. Uh, they've had to kind of put up with it in the past with a thin-faced iron. But we feel like we have the best feel in the game today and we know that's the one thing golfers cite immediately, especially because most golfers, when you try a club, you're hitting range balls. Right. Range balls are harder and clickier, so that definitely comes into play. Uh, when you get on course with your regular softer golf ball, you know, we want them to feel great. And so that's where the F9 Speedback is a really great design, 
great speed from PowerShell, great performance from Speedback, and much better feel. And another area where I don't think you guys get enough credit, and you've done this for a long time, is the way you progressively design mm -hmm. iron sets. And specifically with F9 Speedback, you've adjusted hosel lengths to manipulate weight with the long irons and short irons to get the ball flight and trajectory that you're really looking for. And you can see that right there. I mean, look at that, that's a, a, we pull a six iron versus a gap wedge. And so what you think about is most players are playing wedges with longer hosels, especially if they're playing specialty wedges. And so what you want in a wedge is you want better feel, you want better control, right? With a long iron, you want lower CG. So that's a key reason why you do that is you can lower the CG by lowering the hosel a little bit. You also tend to get a little bit more flex out of the club because you have less rigid metal here causing the shaft to not flex. And that's what you kind of want on a wedge. You don't need a lot of flexing in your wedge necessarily, but you need a little bit more in your long iron. So great, great design overall. And you can see obviously the, uh, the Speedback technology isn't quite as prominent on the short irons and wedges because we know that the weighting can be there. We don't use tungsten or PowerShell in those designs, but we know we can design everything into the cavity back system. And no surprise, of course, given the just increasing popularity, F9 will be available in one length. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you continue to be super excited about one length and what it's doing for golfers out there. Right, Chris, I'm playing one length. I've been playing it for a while. You know, my approach shots using the Arcos Cobra Connect technology went from about a 12 handicap to about an eight using one length. So that was a median improvement for me. My handicap went down. When you look at one length, pretty clean look, but we've made the blade a little bit wider. Okay. So as you get to the long irons, it's a little bit wider, so the CG gets further back, helps the club get up in the air a little bit quicker. Yeah. And that's the only thing that we've had a few people say, hey, I just wish they went up a little bit quicker. Um, but what we find is great satisfaction. In fact, one length is probably, from the retail side, the least returned set of golf clubs that they've had in mm. terms of irons. So it's been a great success when people get out there trying them, they find that they play better and the game's more consistent. So the, the one length story has been great. Um, obviously, Bryson is, is our lead dog here in terms sure. of the conversation. Uh, he's playing great. If you look at his approach shots uh, on tour, he's one of the top players there and will continue to be. That was his, uh, his skill set when he was a, a college amateur as well, was his iron game was phenomenal. So um, we're excited. You know, he won four times this year uh, playing one length and uh, really excited about the future, especially because we know it helps golfers play better. Hard to argue with four wins in one year out on the PGA Tour. Yeah, Pretty exactly. And, and four wins is great. You know, we, he's got a lot of confidence this year. and We think he'll continue to get even better moving into uh, his next year. Absolutely. Tom, great stuff. We appreciate it. Thanks. All right, Chris. Thank you.